Hi folks, today we're going to cover how to build a bar graph in Google Spreadsheets. Bar graphs are used when your independent variable is qualitative, that is to say it falls into neat categories, while your dependent variable is quantitative, that is to say it's measured in numbers. In this experiment I have an independent variable which is the weight of the canisters. It's separate into, ca into categories, it's qualitative. My dependent variable, the velocity, is quantitative, it's measured in numbers. The first thing I need to do is figure out what bars I'm going to have on my graph. What I want is to have my average for each category graphed. That means I'm going to have one bar that shows the average velocity for the half empty canister and one bar that shows the average velocity for the full canister. Then I need to write down the labels that are going to go on each bar and beneath them I'll write the average. So my first bar is going to be labeled half empty. Underneath that, my average is 2.09. My second bar, I'm going to label full, and beneath that, I'll write the average, which was 2.19. Once I've set that out, I'm going to highlight both the category label and the number for the first bar on my graph. Then I'm going to move my mouse cursor up towards the top and click on this little graph button. When I click on this button, it's going to bring open the chart editor. The chart editor should be set so the chart type is a column chart. Stacking should be set to none. Now I have one bar on this graph already. I need to now add my second bar. So what I'm going to do is down here where it says series, I'm going to click this button next to add series and I'm going to highlight the label and average for my second bar. And then hit OK. You can see as soon as I do this, it adds the second bar to the graph. If I had more than two categories, I would keep doing this until I had the average for each category represented on my graph. Now, looking at this, it looks like there's a huge difference between these two numbers. That's because my y-axis is kind of zoomed in. The first thing I want to do is I want to set my y-axis to start at zero so I can really see how that's working. The way you do this is just double-click on your y-axis. And then over here in the chart editor, it'll say vertical axis, and I want to set the minimum value to zero. If I do that and hit enter, you can see now I've got my y-axis set up properly. And I can tell these two averages really aren't that different. Now there's a lot wrong with this graph. Um, right now it doesn't have a title, it doesn't have labels, my x and y axes aren't labeled properly, so there's a bunch I need to fix. So let's start by fixing my axis labels. Over here under Customize, I'm going to go to Chart and Axis Titles. If I click on that and set this to Chart Title, then there's a box right here for me to type the title of this graph. The title of the graph should be descriptive. It should be really clear what exactly your experiment was about just from the title of the graph. So for this, for this experiment, I'm going to call it Velocity of Falling Canisters. And then when I hit enter, this will appear on the top of the graph. So I now have this information. I also want to add in a y-axis label and an x-axis label. So let me change the type here to horizontal axis title. And then for my horizontal axis title, I'm going to type in what my independent variable was, what those categories were. So here in this experiment, the thing that I manipulated was the weight of the canisters. So I'll just type in weight of canisters. And you can see that now appears on my graph. I also need to change the y-axis. So again, I click next to type, set this to vertical axis title. And for my vertical axis title, I'm going to type in what the dependent variable was. So on this graph, my dependent variable was the velocity of the canisters. So I'll type in velocity. And it's also really important that you include the units that you measured this in. So here, my units were meters per second. Now, there's a few more things I want to change. I'd like to have these labels actually go underneath the bars. So what I'm going to do is, on the graph, I'm going to click on my legend. And then I'm just going to change this so the legend's position is set to bottom. Now I can see, oh, the blue bar is my half empty, the red bar is my full. Now there's one more thing I want to do, which is I want to add error bars to this graph. So the error bars are going to visually show the mean absolute deviation 
of each of these data sets. The reason why I include this is so that I can tell how different are these numbers from each other really. So the first thing you're going to need to do is you need to make sure that you've already calculated your mean absolute deviations. And over here I have my mean ab absolute deviation for my first bar, my half empty one, was 0 0.47, while for my second bar, my full one was 0 0.44. Then I'm going to click on one bar on the graph. So I'm going to click on my half empty bar. Now if I look over here, there's an option that says error bars. I'm going to check that box. Then I need to change the type of error bar to constant. Once I've done that, I need to put in the value. For the value, put in the mean absolute deviation, or MAD, for that category. So on average, things deviated from the mean by 0 0.47 meters per second. So I'll put 0 0.47 in here. And you can see when I do that, the error bar shows up on the graph. Now I'm going to go and click on my full bar. And again, I'm going to check the box for error bars, set it to constant, and change the value here to 0 0.44. Now, what I want you to notice looking at this graph, those error bars, you can think of as, if I were to redo this, do this experiment, I wouldn't necessarily get the exact same average, but I'd probably get a number somewhere in this range. Looking at these two bars, you can see that those error bars overlap a lot. This lets me know that the difference between these two categories isn't at all significant. Um, these two bars are essentially showing me the same value. There isn't really any difference in the velocity of the canisters that are falling when they're half empty versus when they're full. Once I've done all this, I'll just exit out of the chart editor and I have my graph. From here, it's just a simple matter of Control-C to copy, and then Control-V to paste it into your lab document.